Hello everyone. I am here today happy to report that my Edinburgh photos are done. Yay! So they're all in layouts. I did a flip through video of the first half. So this is actually just the second half. Um, but I'm so glad to be done. I mean, I loved doing them and, and they're great to look at now that they're done, but I'm happy to be done. It took a while to get through those. Um, I suppose in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that bad um, because I just took the trip in April. So the fact that it is November and I have them done, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with that. Normally I tend to run about a year behind, <laughs> but I think switching to the six by eight pocket pages rather than a 12 by 12 album really helped. I think if I had gone 12 by 12, it would have taken a lot longer and it probably would have been a year or more before they were done. So I'm very pleased with that. So I am going to just switch over here to where we start. So this was the layout where I left off of the last one. So here we are now in the second half. So this is St. Giles Cathedral. Um, I kept wanting to say Giles, but I was corrected <laughs> when I was there. It is Giles, so St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh. Um, so many pictures to include here. It was really hard to kind of um, cut back. And then because there are so many different colors there, it was hard to match some stuff. Um, so like here, I didn't have a right side of the page that was going to work with this. So I decided to just do the four by six insert. So I tried to make them go together. So that's why I have purple here. And then I have a little bit here. There is some in the stained glass. It's probably hard to see unless you get really close up there, but there is some purple in there. Uh, so I tried to go with that. And there's very little purple in scrapbooking in general, I think. So I thought, well, here's a perfect opportunity for me to showcase that. So I decided to go with it. Uh, this is actually a button. I bought it at a local craft store and I just took the um, shank remover tool that I have, cut off the shank on the back and then adhered it with glue dots. So then we're going to flip over. So these two kind of go together, but they don't go with what's on the side. That's the interesting thing about inserts. They're just extra. But so I wanted to make sure I got all the beautiful stained glass in there. So I have two of those. And now this insert is meant to kind of match this photo. This is the middle ceiling. So there are some like side parts to the cathedral, those have different ceilings. They're just more normal, so to speak. This is the central one and my God, is it beautiful. I'm not a religious person, but I can appreciate beautiful architecture when I see it. You can't look at this and not appreciate it. It is stunning. So if you're ever in Edinburgh, I highly recommend that you go to the cathedral so that you can see this. It's, it's well worth your time. So this one, since it had some of that nice blue as well, I tried to put those side by side, but really, let's, let's be real, this is the focal point. All right, so we are still in the cathedral here. Uh, this is, and I journaled about this over here, this is probably why most people go there, um, as tourists anyway, is to see this intricately carved pulpit. And I had known about it, but I thought they said that there were some carved pillars as well. So I'm going around the cathedral trying to find those. Uh, no, those aren't there. It's just this. I mean, and this is totally worth it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I felt kind of like an idiot. I finally had to stop, you know, someone that was like a caretaker and say, do you have pillars that, that I'm not seeing that are carved? And they said, no, it's just this. But this is fantastic. I mean, look at that. And then I just put in a little bit more here so you can see how intricate everything is inside the cathedral. And then I think it was in the mid 1600s, um, the church actually sort of took the stance that they were against continuing to bury people inside the church. So there are not many burials in there. Um, there are memorials, but there aren't many actual burials. Um, but I did get a picture of a couple that are there and so I featured those and because of the lighting in there and the stone how it appears it had a very pink cast to it at least in this area and so I thought all right well I'll play on that a little bit if that's what I have to work with I will go with some pink elements here 
So you wouldn't probably normally think that <laughs> for pictures of a cathedral, but it worked in this respect. And this is the fantastic Thistle Chapel. Uh, the thistle is kind of like the national symbol of Scotland, so you'll see it everywhere if you go visit. Um, and then in this particular cathedral, they built the Thistle Chapel for the order of the thistle. It's an order of chivalry for the knights. Uh, and so it's built for them specifically. So this is quite ornate. As you can see, there are thistle images everywhere. Um, this one was kind of dark because I was facing into the light there at the window. Um, but I used it anyway because I liked it. Uh, but look at this gorgeous ceiling. Again, nobody does ceilings like that anymore. Um, and these are just outrageous. That's how beautiful they are. And then here's, I'm going to do a close up here. Again, this is the Thistle Chapel. This is actually like the antechamber. There's a little sort of side chapel area that you can stand in before you go into the main chapel. So this is in the antechamber. Um, but look at that ceiling again. Oh, because this is metallic paper, the light doesn't want to cooperate with me. But you get the idea. And then there are these, you know, gold embellished symbols on top of the ceiling as well. So here, imagine I'm standing, leaning back as far as I can, staring up the ceiling with my camera, you know, trying to capture this. I'm sure I looked really nice to all the other people that were there. Then I just added this in at the bottom as a little extra. And then you do have to pay a small fee to be able to take photos within the cathedral. Obviously I paid it because I wanted those photos. They give you a little sticker that you have to put on your clothes so that they know that you've paid. Uh, mine was still fairly sticky when we were done. So I quickly um, took it off and saved it on some backing of a bag that I had with me that was a little waxy. So I knew it would survive on there. So I kept that all the way until I got home and it made it onto this card. And then as is common in a lot of cathedrals and churches, at least in the UK and Ireland, from my experience, a lot of them, because they are tourist attractions, as well as places of worship, they will have cafes in the bottom or in the basement somewhere. Uh, this one had that. So we did, we were a little hungry by then. So we did go and have um, a little bit of a late lunch there. And then we moved on our way after that. There's that thistle again. So after we left the cathedral, uh, we explored the city a little bit more. So these are just kind of random shots around the city. Um, I did do a process video for this particular layout. Uh, this was my Harry Potter alley. That's what I called it because it reminded me of just a scene you'd see in the movie, uh, movies. And then whenever I travel, I have a friend who likes me to bring back ornaments for her. And so I did find a Christmas shop on the Royal Mile and um, went in there. It was near Canning Gate, it says. Um, so I went in there and made some purchases. So that was fun. Uh, we found another pub that was just kind of cool, had a sign on the street there and then just some different elements. This is actually the Scottish, um, museum or sorry, museum of Edinburgh, not all of Scotland, just Edinburgh. So, um, that was kind of cool. Nice looking bright yellow old building. Did some journaling. And then after that, we headed off to Edinburgh castle. One thing to note about the castle is it's a very long walk up. You kind of leave the residential area and the shops area of the street that it's on and you kind of walk up this long thing and there's a big open area. I assume it's where they park vehicles when they've got, you know, things going on, um, but it's a big open area and you can just mill around and out front, that's where they have the sign and then they have some phone booths. Um, if you turn facing the other way, so this is looking back at town. So there's this beautiful, magnificent steeple right here that you can see. Um, but you're kind of just milling in this open area before you actually walk into the gate of the castle. And then these are more photos from outside. So again, in that open area along the, what would it be? The north side. So facing the Firth of Forth. Um, they have some Celtic crosses there that are just beautiful work done on them. And so I wanted to include some of those. So here's one, there will be more. Uh, this you can actually see standing in that open area, looking at the castle. Um, this is a gentleman crusader here, I believe on the side of the castle represented there. So you can see all of these things from the outside. 
And there's one more, one more. Uh, I think there were actually four, if I remember correctly. Um, but I didn't take pictures of all of them, so I think I used the three that I had there. But they were all beautiful. Uh, then we actually cross into the castle grounds. So this is right beforehand. We're looking at the city from a different perspective. This would be looking south, if I remember correctly. Um, so then we went inside and we just got lucky. We figured, oh, we'll just mill around, you know, and if a tour happens to go that's near the time we get there, that's fine. Uh, it turned out like we had five minutes to wait when we got in there. Um, this is our tour guide. His name was Andrew. The way that he said it, my my daughter and I were trying not to giggle because it was so quintessentially Scottish the way he said it. I can't even roll the R like that. I mean, I can't do the accent, but he, it just, I would have paid just to stand there and listen to him talk. I didn't even need the tour, um, but he did do a fantastic tour. So his name was Andrew. Um, and so he was kind of giving us some of the basic history before we set out on the grounds. Um, but as we were walking, you can kind of see some people in the foreground here. So he's telling us all about the different gates. There are many different gates build, um, or built rather to keep people out. So if you passed one, you better not think that you're actually in because you're not, you probably have to pass six more gates. I believe there are seven in total. Uh, and I think they all seven were only breached once. So that's a pretty good record. This one actually has a flip here. No angle it so you can see. So this is one of the other gates. And this is a sign that kind of shows what's all on the grounds. This one is blacked out because part of one of the major areas was under restoration when we were there. It was their banquet area, I believe. And so we couldn't fully see that because it was under restoration. But everything else was totally open. So these are just more views around the castle. I'll see if I can get it in focus. There we go. Um, and just, you know, all these old stone buildings and the history behind them. I just, I find all that fascinating. And my daughter does too. So we said, you know, visiting the castle was our favorite part of what we did in Edinburgh. So this was totally worth it. And it's not that expensive to get in. I don't remember what it was, maybe eight pounds or something. I don't remember, but, but whatever it was, it was totally worth it. And because these buildings were so busy, the stonework and some of them have gold and different things on them, I wanted to keep the cards simple and I didn't really need to journal here. We're looking at buildings. Um, so I just used some very simple sort of block font cards to keep it relatively simple. And then, oh, we're out of focus again here. There we go. So I just did a process video on this one the other day. And this is the only um, layout I have that isn't journaled because I haven't figured out quite how I want to say what I want to say. Um, I need to incorporate a couple of things here and I want to make sure I do it right. And I love how I did the cards. So I don't want to screw it up. So I think I need to practice first on something else and then fill that out. But these are just more things from around the castle. These two are actually indoors, obviously. Um, those are within that main area, but really we were on the perimeter because the rest of it was closed off. And then the there's a wall of cannons, and there's a whole story about that, how they don't actually function. <laughs> the queen said, oh, well, we need cannons up there, you know, so that if people try to invade now, it's imposing, and they can see that we have weaponry. We have cannons that we could shoot. Um... And so the people that installed them said, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll get them. Uh, and so they're there for looks, but they don't actually function. And oh, well, <laughs> the queen will have to live with it, I guess, um, because they don't actually work. So that was kind of a funny story that we learned when we were there. Uh, so this is up top of the castle on the hill overlooking the Firth of Forth. That's what's out here. Um, that goes out to the North Sea. So it's quite beautiful to just stand up there. And we had such a sunny, nice day too. We really got lucky. I was so afraid it was going to rain and we wouldn't be able to enjoy this. But we really were outside almost the entire day and it was gorgeous. This is St. Margaret's Chapel. This is on the grounds of the castle. It's tiny. Uh, I think they said if they have a wedding in there, you can have 20 people. That's the max, maybe not even 20, but I think they said 20. Uh, but it is open to the public. Anybody can get a permit to be married there or I believe to have a christening there. Uh, it's just that you have to be willing to limit your number of guests. And then this actually has flip. So there was beautiful stained glass in there. So I wanted to make sure that, that I included that. 
And then as we were getting ready to leave, uh, we saw that they had whiskey tastings. Um, and as you can see, you know, this is the flip that I put on the other side. So there's already one across the top. I needed one here. But if I had put two next to each other, they tend to stick because they're slightly wider the adhesive part is than the actual pocket. So this one I decided to go the other way. So it says vacation mode, this is our trip. Then you actually fold down and there's the journaling. Uh, and then uh, I did buy a shot glass there for my husband and so I kept the receipt for that. Um, but in the UK you can drink legally at age 18 and my daughter was 19 at the time. Um, and so, no, 20, 19, 20. We just went in April, nope, 19. Um, sorry, I had to think about that for a minute. So she was over the drinking age. They did ask her for her ID, but once she showed it, they did serve her. So she got her first taste of alcohol when we were in Scotland. And then this is just a pocket that I put in kind of the extra stuff. I had this big postcard. And again, I thought I was gonna do 12 by 12, so I'd be able to actually use this somehow. Um, but since I couldn't, it's wonderful and I didn't want to not include it. So I just kind of put in an empty pocket here and then drop some extra stuff that I had in the pocket. So I have that, I have a bag from when I went shopping. I have the hop on hop off bus map thing that they gave us, um, another brochure thing. And then I have this Heritage of Scotland bag, um, also from more shopping, so I kept that. All right, when we were done totally at the castle, we went on to explore the city a little bit more as um, we were getting more towards evening. So this is the Cannon Gate area. This is the Cannon Gate Kirkyard. So this is the church and then the cemetery. Um, it's not as big as like the other one that's featured in the first part of my album. So it's, it's a much smaller area to walk around, but it's lovely. I mean, very old stonework. You can look at all the grave markers. And then there's a statue out front of a poet. His name was Robert Ferguson, and he's actually buried on the grounds. So they put this in homage to him out front, and then you can walk through the cemetery and um, find his grave marker. And then I have another flip here with some additional um, stone, headstones, gravestones that we thought were interesting. All right, I have to say this might be my favorite <laughs> layout because it's Harry Potter related. I know. Um, we're walking down the street and I just happen to see these two guys with owls and I'm like, well, that's strange. What's going on there? So it turns out they were representing a group that is promoting preservation of owls and their habitat. And for four pounds, you could hold the owl and pet him and nobody else. I could not believe it. Nobody else in the crowd standing around there wanted to do it. And so I said, well, I'm going to do it. Absolutely. I have to do it. So I paid my four pounds and I got to hold him. Here he is. Isn't he? just beautiful very well behaved too um i think i was probably more nervous than than the owl was um and so it felt very harry potterish to me that i would be walking in edinburgh where the books were written and i know that's where jk rowling lives and hogwarts is supposed to be in scotland and now here i am presented with these owls i mean it just felt magical what can i say so i decided to pull out those harry potter stamps and i used one there it says proud to be a potterhead and then this is one of the other owls that was there. And it made me think of Hedwig a little bit. And then I wrote my journaling. Uh, and then uh, on our way back, the Scotsman here, it was right down the street from our hotel. So we passed it every time we went to our hotel and then every time we left. Um, so we happened to notice we were normally crossing on one side of the street. Well, for whatever reason, I don't remember why, we crossed to the opposite side. So we were right at the base of this then. And we noticed there was this thing about the Scotsman steps, which we hadn't really noticed before. And it explains that it's actually an art feature that they built into the city structure. Uh, and every stone on here is a different type of marble. And so it tells you how many there are. It's a large number. So you can climb them all if you want and get pictures uh, of each different type of step, but you can see the difference even here. So we thought that was pretty cool that they worked it into their city plan to have this feature there. So it's not only beautiful, but it's functional. So we went back to our hotel for a little while. Uh, we did a lot of walking that day, so we were tired. But we knew we had to go out for dinner and we had on our list of things to try while in Edinburgh, we wanted to find the Elephant House. And that is the place where J.K. Rowling wrote part of the Harry Potter series. Uh, so she would sit in there and write and they're 
they've become kind of famous <laughs> for that now, as you can imagine. So we thought, okay, well, if it's in Edinburgh, it can't be that far from where we're staying. We'll go find it. Um, it was a little further than we expected. Uh, and we were trying to find it in the dark primarily. Uh, so it was a little bit of a challenge. I did have to get out my phone and use Google Maps to find it. Uh, eventually we did get there. So this was our meal that we had here and I kept our receipt for what we ordered. Uh, it was also my daughter's first time trying like a hard cider, an alcoholic cider. Um, it was very good. She didn't finish it. <laughs> uh, she said, I'm starting to feel it already. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, pass it over here and, and I'll see if I can do it. Um, so we enjoyed our meal. It was very relaxing, especially after a long day of walking. Um, and then we actually, when we left, we found a much more direct path back. I realized like, oh, we were kind of off a main street here the whole way. I just didn't realize it. Uh, so we went back that way and it was much faster and much easier to find our hotel again. And then this is the bathroom area of the elephant house. They have allowed people to write whatever they want in homage to J.K. Rowling and, and Harry Potter, the books and the movies. Uh, and they do have a little thing up about her with some photos of her when she was writing in, in there. Um, but then they have this all in the bathroom and they have agreed to kind of just preserve it and let people do what they want. So I thought, well, that's so unique. You're never going to see that anywhere else. So I took lots of pictures and they put that in as well. So that is it for Edinburgh. And I mean, look how full this is. <laughs> it's quite stuffed and I'm still going to fit Glasgow in there. So that is my next task is to get all my layouts done for Glasgow. But for now, Edinburgh, totally done. Thanks for watching everybody.